Sam Winchester wielding Mjolnir. Sam Winchester smashing a dude's head off with Thor's hammer. Need I say more? Okay, I will say more. What's up, Tiger Mommy? The second episode of Season 8. So let's get into this, eh? Uh, first things first. New character. The titular Tiger Mommy would be Kevin Trant's mother, who joins the cast for this episode. And her inclusion in this is pretty much to act as a foil for Kevin, which, to me, signifies that, yes, Kevin is an actual character in this show now, and it looks like he'll be a major factor in all of the big story events of this season. Which, eh, is okay, but honestly, this plotline is really taking a backseat in priority, at least for me, to the mystery of what happened in Purgatory. Once again, in this episode, we're fed more glances at Dean's Purgatory story. His Purga story? Eh? Eh? And this is done through more flashbacks. And oh my god, is that- It is! It's Castiel! Sporting a beard, too. Holy shit. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this season is the most rugged and manly season yet. Dean's rocking the shadow, especially in Purgs. Sam's got a bit of a haggard sort of facial hair look going on. And now Cass has a full beard? I officially dub season 8 as the season of the beards. So yeah, we see Cass in this one. And thank God, too. I was worried we'd have to wait a few more episodes to even get a glance at him. But no, the writers were nice to us here. We get to see Dean and Castiel's reunion, and it's a deep moment for the two characters. Cass explaining that he had to book it and leave Dean in order to protect him from the Leviathans, who have a sort of hit out on him, being an angel and all. And Dean promising to make sure that Cass escapes with him and Benny. That's about all we get, though, for now. This is only a small taste of the bigger story of Dean, Benny, and Cass's adventures in Purgatory. We do see a tiny glimpse of perhaps an explanation for Cass's absence right now, and for Dean's rather chilly attitude towards discussing exactly what went down, and why he acts like Cass is pretty much dead. And, well, let's just say that it looks like Dean didn't quite hold up his promise, which should play a big role later on in this story, especially with the repercussions this has had to their characters. So yeah, once again, this purgatory stuff is really interesting. More interesting than this show's previous dabblings in the whole what happened while you were away thing, like they've done before in season 6 and 4. Sam's story doesn't get touched on in this episode, no flashbacks for him or anything, but again, not such a big deal for me. I'm still more interested in the purgatory stuff than the Sam and his dog stuff. What else here? Oh, oh, yeah, the main storyline. The boys in the trans are in search of the Word of God tablet that Kevin hid, the one with the whole get rid of demons spell. It ended up in a big auction of supernatural artifacts hosted and attended by deities and monsters. So we have pagans in this one. I love pagans. It's great when we get to see that the Judeo-Christian god isn't the only big lightning thrower in town. Although, of course, it has always seemed that God, with the capital G, has always been the real Almighty, and all the other deities were more of the power level of an angel, maybe an archangel at best. Still, though, Supernatural hosts a big, strange world, and it's nice when we get to feel that. Oh, we get more Crowley here, naturally. If he wasn't officially the big bad of this season yet, he is now, considering the end of this episode. And we see his demon eyes for the first time. But, actually, I'm a little bummed by it. I liked it when Crowley wasn't into that typical demon-y business. He was his own man and his own monster. That's what made him a cool character. But no, I guess he has red eyes just like any Crossroads demon, even if he is the King of Hell now and all. His smoke is red too, which is, uh, weird. And he doesn't have an actual soul now, or something? Maybe that was just a throwaway joke, though. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Gotta wrap this up, so on to the rating. I'll give this one a uh, 8 out of 10. Yeah, it felt good. It felt like we are finally getting back to actual supernatural after the meh, poor, bad, and only occasionally decent season 6 and 7. I've got a good feeling about this one. Jeremy Carver, you're doing good so far. All you writers are. So let's see if they can keep it up. I certainly hope so. That's it for now, though. So, until next week, ass butts.